Hello traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics and you're listening to the week ahead video for November 3rd, 2019. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Now before I get started, uh, I just need to mention, if you haven't tried out Forex Analytics yet, make sure you do so. It is only $1 for 10 days. Give it a shot and if you, or, you know, you really want to use Forex Analytics but maybe the pricing is a little, you know, a little steep for you on, on our premium product which is only $119 per month. Um, you can actually use the light version, which is $19 a month. But with the light version, you still get the mobile app. You still get the analysis, the basic technical analysis, the candlestick charts. Um, you know, so try it out. And, and remember, when you are testing Forex Analytics over the course of the next 10 days for $1, you will get the premium product to try that out regardless of which version you use. So make sure you test it out. And like I said, download the... Um, download the mobile app we can uh, you you can you can do it on the um, Google Play Store or the iTunes Store and um, this way you have all of our analysis pushed right to your uh, mobile device okay now that I got that out of the way so last week was a really really busy week and uh, let me move the data flash really quick I'll move it out of the way here um, we had a busy week last week and the Euro dollar, or let's just talk about the dollar index first of all. Uh, the dollar index closed near its lows, and um, you can see actually in our analysis the macro candlestick basic technical harmonic Elliott wave analysis is all red. So, one of the benefits of using Forex analytics is seeing if you have multiple types of analysis pointing in the same direction. If you do, um, you know. Does that make the dollar index a good short? I think it. Uh, I think it actually, you know, uh, increases the odds that it continues to move lower. So that's one of the things when using forex analytics is having multiple types of analysis going in, you know, the same direction. Then you start looking for entries on, you know, when when you want to enter the market. In this case, you look at the dollar index. Uh, we have a bear flag pattern. You can see it's a very very um, strong bear flag pattern and at this point in time the dollar index is approaching some pretty key support uh, and on a break below this support I would assume this RSI that you see here is going to you know move into oversold territory so the dollar will you know probably run its course as we approach the 96 uh, 96 level in the dollar index but watch the dollar index because we are well below our 200 day moving average now one of the things that I think that is going to assist the dollar in moving lower through that support is going to be the euro dollar and if you look at the euro the euro dollar is actually not quite at its 200 day moving average its 200 day moving average is at 112 big resistance uh, from from um, you know that that we we closed near was 11180 and a move above 112 would be a pretty bullish event but right now there are a lot of traders looking at the euro thinking oh there might be a double top what i think there is is just you know we're, we're, we're pausing ahead of this big uh resistance but now that now that we've gotten through non-farm payroll the fed um it might give the opportunity for the euro dollar to extend its gains and it's not just it's not just the the euro and that's the one thing i want to point out regarding the dollar something we talked about last week on the week ahead video as well it's not just the euro it's other dollar pairs take a look at the cable okay the cable it has a nice bull flag pattern very shallow pullbacks and if we move above 130 that's going to be a pretty bullish event a lot of people look at look at the the cable and they're like wow why is it so strong well we do have an election coming up but it looks like as of right now a hard brexit is off the table and the market's got to reprice that so uh, just you know watch the pound above like 13050 could be quite bullish again it's not just the it's not just the euro here it's not just the dollar index it, it, it's other dollar pairs too look at the Aussie dollar and by the way we we do have um, the RBA decision uh, and and the rate statement Monday uh, well it's actually Tuesday morning in Australia uh, it's gonna be Monday night for those of us in North America but but look at the Aussie we have this like pretty strong down channel right and we're right up against resistance here 
and that resistance, I mean, it's, it comes in around 69 cent or uh, 69.50, excuse me, and a break above that, we challenge, you know, 70 cents, and then uh, above and beyond, we can we can go, we can really start to accelerate higher. And just remember that 70 cent level has been a pretty big, you know, pretty big level uh, of contention for a while. And so a break above this channel, quite bullish there. Look at the Kiwi. Um, by the way, New Zealand has a, um, we have uh, the New Zealand jobs report. And look at this big inverted head and shoulder pattern. It's huge, right? So here we are testing some resistance and a move above the, um, uh, that, that comes in at uh, six. Well, it's 6420 has really been a, been a, you know, big level contention for the pair, but you know, a move above 6450 would be quite bullish. All right. Uh, some of the, some of the currencies that have really stalled, but might accelerate. You look at the Swissy. Here's the US dollar Swiss franc, big support down here. You know, this, this is, uh, this is right around 97, uh, it's like 97.50 and 98 cents below that. We might test these, uh, these trend lows. Um, down below 97 cents. Okay, that that's some big support. And look at the uh, Canadian. The Canadians really um, held up the market. It 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 you know as far as the dollar goes. Um, and but but what we have done is we've retested the underside of this trend line here. And the dollar Canadian, I think, if we head back towards 130, like let's imagine the dollar starts to move lower against other majors. The dollar Canadian is at risk of another move below 130, and a move below 130 would be quite devastating for this pair. And then, you know, at the same time, look at the dollar Mexican peso, and you know, the dollar Mexican peso, big, big um, triangle. You know, I've, I've been thinking for the longest time that this is going to be a pennant and it was going to move higher, but with risk appetite as strong as it is, the and, and with USMCA probably going to pass here within the next couple of weeks, a move below support in not only the dollar Mexican peso, but also the dollar Canadian is quite high. Now, as far as data goes, going back to the Canadian, there is the Canadian jobs report coming up this Friday. That's something that, that, that maybe that is the catalyst that drives us below 130 on a strong Canadian jobs report. Um, that you know that isn't that is possible um, uh, going into this next week. So what I I guess what I'm trying to point out here is the dollar is really threatening um, against a lot of different currencies, and it's something that you know could accelerate, especially if the euro dollar gets above the 200-day moving average. You might see the dollar accelerate lower against other currencies as well. Last thing I want to bring to your attention for this week, um, last week was so busy, this week is uh, much easier as far as um, as far as data goes, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be a busy week. You have the S&P that is at new all-time highs. We are at the 127% extension of this last down move. You can see this last down move right here. We're at the 127% extension, but as long as we remain above uh, 3020. I mean, you can see last week we dipped to 3020 twice and then, you know, we popped up at the end of the week. This market looks bullish. A lot of people looking at this big megaphone pattern. You know, I, I think we could get an accelerated move here, maybe some sort of blow off top. And that would create a lot of volatility in the markets. But as of right now, the stock market is bullish. It looks like 130 or, uh, excuse me, 3100 and and, and beyond is quite possible. Look at um, the relative strength on the, on the daily charts here. You know, it, we, yes, we are divergent, but when you have divergent relative strength, you know, once it breaks out, it just confirms the move. And so right now we're getting a strong up move and that RSI breaking out technically points is higher. You know, I've, I've been hoping uh, if you listen to the daily webinars, I've been hoping that we would get some sort of, um, you know, blow off top or something because that, that, that usually marks the high in a market. And I've been hoping that that would be the case. This might actually be the case. It, 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 right now, a lot of people have been short 
and a lot of people are underweight the market. It could accelerate going into year end. There's a lot of things that the market's looking um, forward to. Brexit, U.S. China trade deal. Um, you know, hopefully they make some progress. You know, past phase one, but the but the market looks bullish right now. And and unless we break back below uh, thirty twenty in the S and P, I don't think there's any reason to be bearish technically. So we'll be watching that carefully. And it, as long as the S and P stays stays um, elevated here, the dollar might stay weak. As you know, the 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 uh, currency market. Um, yen pairs like the Euro Yen, Aussie Yen, Canadian Yen continue, continue to move higher um, as risk appetite improves. Um, yen would stay weak and the dollar would probably stay weak as a result. But if we broke we broke back below 3020 in the S&P, that could usher in a little bit of dollar strength, maybe from a risk aversion standpoint. People start looking for a safe haven currency. That's something also to to uh, take into account. Anyway, guys, next week, as far as the data that go, that we have next week, um, we have Australian retail sales tonight. Uh, I, I'm saying tonight, it's actually Sunday night, Monday morning if you're in Australia, but there's gonna be retail sales. Um, uh, uh, Christine Lagarde, the new ECB president, she is speaking on Monday morning. So that's something that this will be her first speech as ECB president. So that's something that we're going to have to pay attention to because a lot of traders are, have been so, um, they, they think that Lagarde's going to be extremely dovish. You know, I'm not so sure about that. So that's going to be pretty important. Uh, we have Canadian trade balance on Tuesday. Remember, we also have Tuesday morning in Australia, we have the RBA um, rate decision. We have ISM services PMIs out of the US on Tuesday. Tuesday night or Wednesday morning in New Zealand, we have employment um, uh, employment data, which is gonna be important. Uh, we have the Bank of England on Thursday, their rate decision. And by the way, you know, if, if you're if you're wondering about the uh, the Bank of England, it's pro it's probably gonna be a non event because they can't really move while they're waiting, you know, everybody's waiting on Brexit. So uh, the, the Bank of England um, rate decisions are going to be more important once we get past Brexit, hopefully within the next couple of months. Uh, and then Canadian employment at the end of the week. So that's going to be that that's going to be on Friday. So guys and gals, if you like this video, um, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. It always helps us out and make sure you subscribe to our video. And I'll see you on the face webinar tomorrow, our free webinars. If you don't, uh, if you don't um, attend those already, make sure you listen in every morning. Uh, myself and the rest of the team, we, we broadcast and, um, and keep you up to date on what's happening throughout the course of the week. So uh, have a great remainder of your weekend. My name is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. I'll talk to you soon.